Jimmy the Fontmeister and today we're going to discuss adding open type features to your photographer fonts. Many of our customers want to create full featured open type fonts in photographer. They want to add features such as ligatures, small caps, bi-directional fonts, class kerning, proportional metrics, old style or hanging numerals, you know those old fashioned numbers that hang below the baseline, etc, etc. Now when an open type is built this way, then the end user will be able to select these features on the menu in an application and use them painlessly. So if you're a professional font foundry, you will want to create full featured open type fonts. But for other users, they should weigh the painfulness of this project in light of the fact that there is not wide application support for open type features. So you may not need to add these features and you could settle for an open type which works on a Mac and a PC but it doesn't have the full open type feature set. The reason I mention painfulness is because photographer does not have the ability to edit the open type feature set internally. Open type features must be edited in a file called an FEA or feature file. Now since a picture is worth a thousand words, let's just take a look at one of those files. Your first step would be to go on the internet somewhere and find an FEA file that has the features you want. This is an example of an FEA file which I found at adobe.com by searching for FEA. In order to know how to edit this file, you probably want to spend some time on Adobe's website. Or maybe you want to look around on Google and learn all you can about the OTF feature set. This may be a good time to mention that if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you're going to want to take a look at FontLab Studio because it has an FEA table editor built in. So you're going to need to do some homework on what features you want, and you'll be editing this file in a text editor, and then saving it in an ASCII text-only format. Then you're going to want to go and rename the file so that it has an FEA extender. Okay, once you've got your FEA file ready, go back to Photographer and go to Element, Font Info, and the Encoding tab, and select and under Open Type Layout, Use External File. You will notice this refers to FEA or AFDKO files. AFDKO is just another way of referring to the FEA file spec. It stands for Adobe Font Development Kit for OpenType. Now click the Browse button and go and get your FEA file. Now when you're finished, just click OK. Now there is another problem which may come up. You notice these slots here with two asterisks in them. In Photographer, the double asterisk means not defined. Now depending on the encoding table you are using for your font, the FEA file may have some characters which are not recognized by that encoding. This will cause you to see double asterisks in the font window. So if your choice of encoding doesn't have enough character slots to fit the number of new characters, then you're going to have to go to Element and Font Info and change the number of characters under the encoding tab, under the Glyph Repertoire uh, box here. Okay, now, once you've added the proper amount of characters, to get rid of these asterisks, you're going to have to select a slot. You're going to have to go to Element, Selection Info, and if you happen to know the Unicode, you can type it in, and then I can click Get Name from Unicode. And now what I've got, and I just typed in a random Unicode there, what I've got now, and I can view by name, is now I have a slot that's been defined by Unicode. Of course, now this means I'm using a custom encoding. So once you can see, once you've defined the character, then the double asterisk will go away and be replaced by the Unicode glyph name. Now, when you're ready to generate the font, you go to File, Generate Font, click on Advanced, click on Cross Platform, you've got Open Type selected, click the Format Options button. Now we're going to be using an external file, so we browse for it. And then 
there's these other things to think about and normally I would say leave everything at the defaults but if you are going to create an open type postscript flavored font you may want to check the checkbox here compress using subroutines if you have a large font then this compression will help as far as reducing the file size of the font now if you click on use windows symbol encoding this means you've got a font which you are going to try to use in something like Microsoft Word's insert symbol feature. Okay, so you can click the OK button to generate the font, finish the job, then click generate. And you will now have an open type font which has been generated with an external file and can be used in an application such as Adobe InDesign to take advantage of the open type features on the InDesign menu. Thank you for watching the Fontarford tutorial series, and as always, uh, let us know if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see covered in the series, and refer to your Fontographer user manual for more details.